the dome tweeter is designed that way not so much because of the shape of the dome, but because of the size. The secret of good dispersion in a high frequency loudspeaker is small size. And when you don't have good dispersion in a loudspeaker, it's not that it, the speaker sounds good on axis but doesn't sound so good off axis. It's that the speaker as a whole doesn't project enough high frequency power into the room because most of the sound that you hear from a loudspeaker in a normally reverberant room is that reflected from the walls, floor, and ceiling. So that if you take a speaker which sends out wonderful high frequency response on axis and very poor high frequency response off axis, that speaker will sound dull from any listening position, including one on axis. And if you put a dispersing lens in front of the speaker, that won't do much good because there isn't enough high frequency energy to disperse. If you take a, what was then the, the standard tweeter, four or five inch cone tweeter, and, and shrink it down to two inches and one inch, the voice coil will become so small that you won't be able to handle any power. So I put my voice coil on the large diameter of the diaphragm, and when you do that, the shape of the diaphragm emerges almost naturally as a dome. And the first speaker to use it was the AR3, which used an acoustic suspension 12-inch woofer and a 2-inch mid-range dome tweeter and a 1 3 8 inch uh, super tweeter. I was very uh, happy when uh, the AR3 uh, ended up in the permanent exhibit of the Smithsonian Institution which has a section on the history of uh, high fidelity.